safety first, transporting individuals in mobility devices. On our campus, safety is the number one priority in operating, staffing, and escorting passengers in a transportation vehicle. Safety considerations are sometimes overshadowed by the many responsibilities our jobs demand of us. All vehicles and mobility devices are different, and all people are different, yet the key principles of safety remain the same. Transportation safety is everyone's responsibility. Though the vehicle driver has the primary role, all staff should be aware of what can go wrong and take personal responsibility to ensure the safety of all staff and passengers. Today, Becky is getting ready to take Oni to a medical appointment. There's just a few things on her mind. Oni's physical limitations and behavior patterns. Is the first aid kit in the van? Is there gas in the van? Bring a lunch, a change of clothing, ID, washcloths, medication. But wait, safety first. Becky stops a safe distance from the van and applies the brake. She checks the safety belt to make sure it's secure and gets ready to load Oni into the van with the lift. Becky and the rest of the staff operators and drivers need to be aware of the different types of lifts to assure safe transportation for passengers with mobility devices. By implementing these ADA requirements, the transportation vehicles are accessible for medical appointments and on and off campus activities. Individuals or groups of individuals who require supervision are escorted in the least restrictive manner possible to ensure their safety and privacy. Becky makes sure the lift is all the way to the ground. She looks inside to check the current position of the tie-down and enters the side door of the van to reposition the tie-downs for proper placement for Oni's device. To move the fitting, just depress the keeper and reinsert the positive lock fitting on the E-Track for proper placement. Make sure the strap is secure and fully extended. Becky checks the front over center strap and opens the over center buckle by pressing on the release, then making sure the strap is fully extended. Oni's escort, Dan, is here to assist in facilitating safety. The escort will help the staff person load the mobility device into the van. Becky releases the brakes on Oni's chair and safely wheels her device toward the lift. The mobility device enters the lift backwards as the operator lowers the safety barrier with her foot. The device continues backwards until the wheels clear the safety barrier. The brake is set and Becky prepares to raise the lift. Making sure Oni's arms and legs are positioned close to the body, Becky braces the device with Dan assisting, and the lift raises Oni. The escort is inside the van to receive the mobility device. He releases the brake and takes the device into the van, never leaving the device unattended. Dan pulls Oni in and turns her device around so it is forward-facing and in proper alignment with the tie-downs on the floor of the van. He's wearing shoes with traction to prevent slipping. Okay, Dan then sets the brake and makes a final adjustment to the back left tie down by depressing the keeper and moving the fitting to the correct position on the E-Track with the strap fully extended. The CHP Passenger Transportation Handbook requires that fasteners contact the mobility device on at least three points non-movable points. Becky begins by wrapping the tie-down around a secure point on the mobility device, securing the over-center strap to the mobility device, pulling the strap tight, and closing the cam buckle. She makes sure not to use the spokes of the wheels for securement. Moving to the second tie-down, she releases the strap and wraps it around a secure point on the mobility device. Placing the hooks through the D-ring, then pulling the tensoring strap until it's tight. She then assists the escort in learning how to tie down properly. We push down on this, and this pulls out. And then you loop the buckle around and put it through the hook. And then you pull on this, pull on that, and make okay. sure it's tight. All right. And that's it. And you just want to make sure you don't put it on the brake. You don't hook it to the brake. Okay. Everyone assisting with transportation of mobility devices 
must know how to tie down correctly. As the driver moves out of the van, she checks to make sure all straps are tight. She walks to the back of the van, knowing that inside, Oni is safe and secure. Becky presses the button to close the lift. Dan is in the passenger seat, keeping his eye on Oni and making sure she's as informed as possible on what their plans are and where they're going. Becky knows that if she has any questions about loading and operating the van, she should call the dispatcher. If there's a malfunction of any kind, she can call the motor pool. She can also check out a cellular phone at the switchboard. She has taken personal responsibility to assure Oni a safe journey. And now it's time to go. When they return, they disembark with the same principles they used to embark. Safety is the number one priority. Now, where did she put those extra blankets? The tram is used consistently by passengers with a wide variety of mobility devices. Stephen is on his way across campus. Becky is reviewing her checklist. Need suctioning machine? Oxygen tank? No. Sunscreen, blankets and shirts for privacy, Stephen's dietary restrictions, briefs, but wait, safety first. Prior to boarding, a safe distance back from the tram and ramp, Becky sets the brakes on both sides of the device. The driver, Steve, is responsible for lowering the ramp on the most even surface available. Steve helps Becky release the two brakes. It takes two people to complete the task of safely loading onto a tram. The center of gravity is an important consideration, as well as the placement of arms, legs, and feet. The driver and escort position the device into place. The brakes are set. The tram driver, assisted by the staff, secures the mobility device with the tie-downs. The device is secured by running a strap side to side then inserting it into the safety buckle and pulling it tight. Care is taken not to use the spokes of the wheels for support. Normally, five or more devices are in a car at a time and help to hold each other in. Before leaving, the driver checks to make sure the device is secure and all is well. No one is allowed to stand in the tram when it's moving. Becky provides extra safety by sitting within Stephen's immediate area. The driver then raises the ramp and secures the lock. There is an alternative seating mechanism in a tram that is an option when there is a single passenger or just a small group. After the mobility device is loaded, the side seats are lifted and the device backed into the special clamps located on the floor of the tram. These positive locking clamps secure the device in place. Once the brakes are set, the escort takes her place and the driver prepares to leave. They know they were responsible by following the basic key principles of safety. The driver puts the ramp up and locks it safely into place. Had there been a problem, they would have contacted the motor pool immediately. Inside the tram, Becky makes sure Stephen is okay and aware of their plans. The driver removes the safety block from behind the tire, enters the cab, and starts the tram. As he carefully pulls out into the flow of traffic, Becky holds onto Stephen's device to minimize the action of the tram when it starts to move. They're off across campus to the therapy pool, where Stephen can have some special time. Another mobility device commonly transported on and off campus is the electric mobility device. Becky and Ron are ready to go on a field trip. Becky's thoughts turn to Ron. Is his battery charged? Should he bring a sweater? What if it rains? Will they be back in time? Is there enough gas in the van? Will they be out past mealtime? Does he have his backpack? But wait. Safety first. Becky locks the manual brake and disengages the motor belt as Ron stops a safe distance from the van. Becky then opens the van doors as she is greeted by Marcia, Ron's escort. 
The weight of the electric mobility device and its center of gravity is a big consideration when loading. All parties are positioned a safe distance from the vehicle as the lift is lowered. Ron has been told earlier where they are going and what to expect. Becky checks to see the placement of the tie-downs inside the van. She walks around the outside and enters the van to reposition the tie-downs. To move the tie-downs, she depresses the keeper and inserts the positive lock fitting into the proper slot on the E-track, making sure the strap is fully extended. She then opens the over-center cam buckle and extends the strap to be ready to secure Ron's device. In this case, Becky releases the manual brakes on Ron's electric mobility device and carefully pushes him into position. Marcia assists, pulling the heavy device over the safety barrier and positioning it on the lift with the back clearing the edge of the van. They then set both brakes and hold the electric mobility device securely as the lift rises. Once the lift is up, Marsha moves to the inside of the van to receive the device. Making sure Ron's arms are toward his body, they carefully wheel the device into the van. In this case, because of the size of the electric mobility device, he enters the van facing forward and does not have to be turned around. The escort and driver set the brakes and proceed to tie down the device. They release the straps and loop the D-ring end around a secure area. Then fasten it into the wire hook and tighten the strap. While Marcia completes her tie-down, Becky moves to the third point to adjust the over-center cam buckle with the same process, pulling the strap tight and then securing the buckle. Once the tie-down is secure, Becky checks the straps and leaves through the side van door. Marsha makes sure Ron is okay, closes the door, and sits in the passenger seat. As the driver, Becky's job is closing the lift and making sure that all the key principles of safety have been met. Getting ready for a medical appointment or a community outing is much more than meets the eye. Prevention of injury to passengers and staff is the number one priority. In the event that they go out of town, a transport operator's booklet is located in the van for assistance. When disembarking from the van, the same principles are followed that we've seen here. Passengers must be placed safely away from traffic and at a safe distance from the van and lift at all times. It's true staff have much to think about. Special equipment, clothing, first aid kits, gas, oil, food, medications, sunscreen, rain gear, ID cards, briefs, blankets, travel logs, clothing protectors, fire extinguishers. But remember, safety comes first. <laughs>